the United States declared a national emergency. I live in a tri-state area, which would be New, jo New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, or New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, however you are situated. And several towns are enforcing curfews and lockdowns, et cetera. How does that apply to the private individual? Those that do not know, or those that are outside of the fold, <laughs> don't know these answers. And without giving too much away, those outside of the know need to know that these restrictions are placed on citizens, which is why in the last video, I broke down citizen and civilian. And as a private individual, or let's say a private group, speaking to that private group that you may be a part of, does your group have um, clearance to move about? Because if you need to get resources from one place to another, will you be restricted? Do you know what you need to do to get that clearance? You just can't say I'm a national. You're, you're, I'm outside of your jurisdiction. <laughs> your group needs to be operating in such a way that is respected and protected. Okay, so when they quarantine, they cordon off, they isolate, you will still be able to move about to a degree. You know, if this town is infected, you may have to avoid that town and go around. Just because you have uh, status and standing does not mean you can just march through the town. All right. However, if you're in the town, you need to get out. Or perhaps you're in the town or outside of town, you need to get in the town and get resources out, whatever, you know, would your clearance, your status and your standing be able to afford you that ability? This is a Marshall Enterprises presentation. Family, it hasn't even been 24 hours. The, <laughs> the messages have been crazy. Uh, the calls ramped up a little bit. <laughs> Listen, in my other videos, I gave up a bunch of jewels. And a lot, in most of my videos, I give out jewels. I don't know if you can hear that. Turn my volume up here. Jersey City Scanner. Broadcastify. Um to let a little bit of a cat out the bag, my expertise, or well, I have expertise in several areas. One of the main ones is communications. I love to communicate. I love to get one message from one place to the other. I love this. So I can be relied upon to be the communications aspect all right. I, anyway, listen, listen, listen. You should not be nervous. If you want to get a grasp on what's going on in your neighborhood, excuse me, I always seem to be bert, belching when I'm on these videos. If you want to get a grasp of what's going on in your neighborhoods and you don't have a handheld scanner, two way radio, ham radio, you can use your cell phone. Go to, and that was dirty, go to 
Broadcastify. You can go to Scanner fre um, Frequency. I'll put the links in the description. And log into your area's communications, EMS, fire, police, and listen to what's going on around you. Now, I'm trying to recall all of the conversations or the gist of the conversations I've had over the past eight hours with respect to um, the last video. Communications is key. Prepping is key. Networking is key. You need to be doing these things prior to an emergency and who you're doing it with is important. If you are... Um, I, I don't even know where to go with this one. I really don't. We are in very interesting times. And the people that uh, regularly listen to my channel, that regularly listen to or watch my videos, I'm not trying to scare anybody. And I don't want to appear as a conspiracy theorist, etc. Understand the times that we are in right now. Speaking with a coworker, and they are concerned about elder relatives in their home. I have a very good immune system. And let me get rid of these. I don't need these. I have a very good immune system. And if I was to contract this virus that's going around, it may not even affect me, but it's still dormant in me. So now if somebody else that I come in contact with, or give, let me give you this visual. I'm in my office. I walk out the door. I go to the men's room. I happen to touch the doorknob. The person has corona. You can even be walking past somebody and just their breathing. Now, I, I need to be careful. I don't want to give out wrong information. I'm just trying to paint a picture for you to see what I'm saying. If the air and our passing, they're breathing and they have it, I'm breathing, I don't have it, I ingest it in my lungs. This nasty little virus is now trying to invade my body, but my immune system is strong and is doing battle, battle with it. So now I now come in contact with, let's say, my wife, who has a compromised immune system. And now the air is exchanged with her, and now that virus gets in her, and now it wreaks havoc because her immune system is not as strong as mine, okay? So that is the issue of what we're facing right now. There are carriers of this virus and people that may never show symptoms because their immune system is strong. Then you have someone that does not have a, a, a strong immune system that once they get in contact with you and now they're exposed or they catch it. Now, how did they catch it? Because I don't have it, and they were in the house all this time. It's because I don't have it, but I'm a carrier. Understand? Self-preservation. Self-preservation. But I really came back on to go into communication, preparation. I speak about this on other videos. I've spoken about this in groups of what we need to do and how we need to mobilize and do different things. And some people paid attention, a lot of people did not. Now, when times get rough, speaking of times getting rough, I'm gonna do a prediction. Hope it doesn't happen, but I'm gonna do a prediction. There's gonna be a run on the ATMs. Back in the days, it was a run on the banks. The banks do not have enough money on hand to pay out everybody that's looking to get their money out. You'll go to the ATM. The ATM may have a, a, a max of $5,000 per machine. Those ATM machines are going to be empty. So just like you go to the store shelves and see empty shelves, you're going to see empty ATMs that you're going to go to. And talk about price gouging on, you know, Lysol containers and stuff like that. You'll go to a bodega's ATM and they're gonna charge $10, $20 to get money out. Prediction. If you're not prepared, if you haven't got things in place, I'm not gonna say it's the end of the world for you. It's just, you're gonna have more of a 
more trouble navigating in these next couple of weeks, next couple of months. So once we get through this and we have additional conversations or you stay on this channel, I'm going to try to assist you in being prepared and being ready for the next incident. Katrina happened and people realized, oh my God, I didn't have candles. I didn't have light bulb, uh, um, flashlights. I didn't have this and have that. I didn't have a generator. Okay, since Katrina, did you make the change? No. Now we're at another trying moment in time. And again, you're behind the eight ball. So take heed, take heed, take heed on what you should be doing, what you could be doing, what could have been doing. Fuck power. Fuck these shows. Fuck Netflix. You need to be watching stuff that's going to educate you to get you prepared for the what ifs. Now, once you're prepared for the what ifs, now you can just go watch your TV shows as well or do whatever. Don't even watch the news because it won't affect you because you're already prepared. But if you're not prepared, the last thing you want to be watching is reality TV because it ain't reality. Get prepared. Be prepared. So that you're not caught off guard. Know what your resources are. Know how to use your resources. Gather your candles. Gather your different things. You know what? I I, I don't I I get frustrated and I don't want to. I don't want to lose anybody when I say this. It's not so much that I don't care about you and I'm not concerned with your well being. In times like this, I can't be Captain Save a Hole, for lack of a better description. I can't save everybody. I need to concentrate on myself and those in my immediate circle. Anyone outside of the circle, I can give you advice and I can give you guidance, but that's as far as I can go in trying times like this. Once we get over this hump, let's work together to form little pockets of groups of prepared folk. So when we come upon another emergency, we're going to have more of a conversation because you're not looking for help. You're looking to help. Okay. But I'm rolling with you. How can I get down? What do I need to do? How do I, what do I do? It's a lot of questions right now. It's a lot of inquiries. No, it's never too late. It's never too late. Form your own network. Network. What the hell am I talking about? Are you a doctor? Are you a nurse? Are you an EMT? Are you a pharmacist? Are you a healthcare worker? Are you, what is your specialty? Are you a truck driver? Are you a bus driver? These are resources that is critical in the private. Why? Because at times like these, the police are talking about they're not going to respond to incidents that may jeopardize their officers or jeopardize their first responders. So in the private, we need our own team that will respond to help out our network. So if we have someone that is in need of medical attention, we have our own private doctors, whether they've been uh, retired excuse me, whether they're retired, they have their own practices, et cetera. That is what is in our network. We have locksmiths. Like I said, we have bus drivers. We have truck drivers. Because logistically, we may need to move 
water from this town to that town. We may need to move supplies from here to there. Our communication equipment, we, need, we may need to get from here to there. You know, can't put it in my truck anymore. I need, I need to gather up all of the equipment and take it to where it needs to go. So the network is full. Now, mind you, in the Rolodex, there isn't one truck driver. There isn't one bus operator or bus driver. There isn't one nurse, one doctor. There are several. It's several for the network because in, in this atmosphere, it's about self-preservation. Self Suppose our only nurse catches the virus and can't assist us. We need a backup. So this is what needs to be done. Who's talking about this? Who's rallying? Who's organizing? You need to do it. Don't wait for somebody else to do it. Do it yourself. Think about what you need in these times. Think about who you would need. Would not a pharmacist be very critical right now? Would not a holistic doctor be critical at times like this? Would not a, a army uh, veteran, a Marine veteran, because they know or they have been trained on how to navigate and do certain things. So logistically, get your team together. No, it's not too late. We're in the midst of an emergency right now. It's still not too late. Make your phone calls, get your groups together. Can you join mine? Send me, email me, text me your information. Let me know how you can benefit the, the private network. And we'll definitely have a conversation and we'll add you to the Rolodex. You know, your, your credentials need to be checked out because you just can't say that you're EMT and you're not EMT. But, you know, we, we always need additional soldiers, for lack of a better term. All right. So that's what this is about. Private people do private things. Let's just say this emergency is not an emergency. This is an average normal day. Your family doesn't have health coverage, but we have a doctor or we have a nurse in our network that would be able to see you or a dentist that would, you got a, a toothache or you have something going on. You know, these are not dentists that learned in the backyard. These are maybe board certified. Uh, they have their, their, their masters in whatever degrees in the, these fields. So you're not going to somebody's uh, backyard or somebody's basement. You know, you're going into an establishment, but not here. The network is critical. What is your group doing? Who are you with? 